What is going on everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about two trades that I made today on the 8th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that did well today and that I see potential in over these next coming weeks. So before we do get into this, for all you out there that find value in these videos that really enjoy the content here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. It really does help the channel grow, and I really appreciate all you guys out there that do hit the like button, that subscribe to the channel, and of course, that watch the videos. It really does mean a lot to me, and it pushes me to create more content for all you guys out there. So again, I really, really do appreciate everyone watching these videos. So without further ado, guys, let's hop right into the topic of today's video. Starting off here with the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest U.S. traded companies, we can see this index was up around $1.83 today, up around 0.07%, pretty much closing off the day near the break-even point from the close yesterday. The Dow Jones ended up closing the day down around $63, down around 0.25%, and the NASDAQ is up around $18.50, up around 0.27%. And we can see here, guys, the major indices had a run in the last five minutes of the market open. We can see here, literally at around 355, the, at the NASDAQ slash NQ went up from around 6,900 up to around 69.24. We can see the Dow Jones did a very similar pop-up right here, and the SPX did the same exact thing as well. So what, what really happened here? I'm not too sure. Drop a comment down below. Why did this happen? Do you guys have any uh, ideas? Did we get some news that I'm missing right now? Um, you know, I'm pretty interested to see, but there could be no reason why this happened. You know, sometimes the market does end up flying up, heading into the close. You know, these things are not... Two out of the ordinary, but I am interested to see if there is any, uh, you know, news that did come out that did end up, you know, fluctuating the market up in the last five minutes. But anyway, guys, you know, we ended up closing the day on the break even on the SPX, but that doesn't really tell the whole story, right? We can see, you know, we ended up closing off the day yesterday at around 2707, and we actually gapped down to around 2693 at the open and ended up downtrending all the way to the low of the day here at around 2683, which was a point in time that the SPX was down around 0.9%, down around $23. So at this time period, guys, I was like, okay, this might be another big red day. But we can see, guys, we kind of double bottomed here which is a good sign that the stock ETF index future that we're watching could be pushing back up, right? We ended up double bottoming. We made a higher low here from the previous, which is a first sign of a potential uptrend. We ended up breaking these resistances. The 50 SMA crossed above the 180 SMA, which is a very bullish sign. And pretty much we ended up uptrending for the rest of the day, the latter half of the market open for the last four, four and a half hours of the market ended up closing, you know, you know, right where we ended up closing yesterday, thus having a break even day. But I was actually able to profit on a trade where, you know, the SPX ended up pushing down here, but we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. So stay tuned if you guys want to listen to that. But, you know, in terms of the 184 hour chart, guys, what I want to point out in this video is we got the, you know, we got that pullback in the overall markets that we were waiting for, right? We noticed that. We were uptrending for many, many days without a pullback. And we finally got that pullback about two days ago. We had another day that was red, right? I think, right? Am I, am I, am I talking right here? Yeah, we had that red day yesterday, that big red day right? Oh, actually, no, we only had one red day, honestly, guys. We only had one big red day. I thought today was actually going to be the second red day, but like I said, we ended up breaking even, but we're getting the pullback that we've been waiting for. But the one thing I want to actually mention is that, you know, just because we got this pullback, we're still technically holding that uptrend, guys. If you can see here on the 20-day, one-hour chart, 
based on that trend line that I just drew for you guys, and honestly, if I delete this very quickly and uh, draw a channel for you, you know, you can see that we're still trading. The channel might not look too good right now, but I'll draw it for you guys anyway. But you can still see, right, that we're trading in this uptrending channel. It's not going to look too... Actually, no, there it is, right? You can see we're still trading in this uptrending channel. And the fact that we sold off early on today and the latter half of the market, we ended up pushing back up to the break-even point. That just solidified the support level of this channel, right? So right now, guys, we honestly could be headed back more green to come over these next coming days, just strictly based off these technicals on the 20-day, one-hour chart, right? I wouldn't be too surprised, you know, this upcoming week if we ended up pushing back up based off these technicals. And on this 20-day, one-hour chart, keep an eye on this resistance of the 50 SMA here. If we do break that, that's going to be a good sign for more upside to come. And another thing I want to point out to you guys is this cross between, or above rather, the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA. And remember what we talked about. The 50 SMA, whenever it crosses above the 180 SMA, that is a very bullish sign. And we use these moving averages to identify trends in the market, in stocks, ETFs, futures, indices, whatever we're trading, we use these moving averages to identify where it could potentially be moving, where it, you know, where is it going down? Is it going up? You know, this is what we use to plan out our trades. And if we look a little bit closer, we can see the slow cross above the 180 SMA right now as the market headed into the close of today, right? So this, you know, right now, guys, you know, the fact that we're holding the bottom of the channel, the, one, uh, the 50 SMA is crossing above the 180 SMA. This is really signaling that there could be some green to come next week. We could be pushing back up. You know, this is what these technicals are telling me, right? And if we take a look at the Dow Jones, very similar thing, right? We were waiting for the pullback. We got that pretty big pullback, right? On the one-day, one-minute chart here, we can see we gapped down in the morning. We found the low of day at around 11.45, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then we uptrended for the rest of the day. The 50 SMA broke above the 180 SMA. You know, on the longer-term chart here, we can see the 50 SMA is breaking above the 180 SMA. Again, a very bullish sign. So, you know, these, um, you know, these two indices, they are looking like they're reversing to the upside. The RSI level is showing that it's at a pretty decent spot right now. It's not too overbought, not too oversold. It could be at a spot right now of a reversal. And if we take a look, you know, a bit closer here on the 20 day, one minute or one hour, rather, let me just qu quickly clear this drawing set for you guys so we can draw the channel on the Dow Jones as well, so you guys can get a better understanding of what I'm looking at here, right? Just take a look at that channel, right? It's holding the support of the channel, especially with that push on the latter half of the day today. You know, this is all looking gravy for a pullback or a push up rather for more green to come. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. These technicals to me are screaming for more green to come. I know a lot of people, you know, don't want to hear that. You know, I'm personally bearish on the market right now. I know a lot of people out there are bearish as well, but you know, the technicals don't lie. And this is what the technicals are telling us right now, guys, you know, there might be more green coming this upcoming week. But of course, you know, if we break the supports of these channels on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, we could be headed back down in terms of these major indices. So if we take a look at the NQ, the NASDAQ, we all know that the 50 SMA has been crossed up, uh, you know, crossed over the 180 SMA on this particular indice, mo uh, indice uh, mostly because the tech stocks have been doing very well over the past couple of weeks, and they have a heavy weight on the overall NASDAQ, which is why, you know, this broke, the 50 SMA broke above the 180 SMA back in the middle of January. So it's been about a month since we did get that bullish sign. And, you know, you can see the moving averages really were right at this point, right? We got the break above and we got about, you know, let's see how many percentage points we got in the NQ since that break, right? Since we saw the break of the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA, 
we had about 7%, you know, to the green from the middle of January up to where we are right now. And we talked about these two separate channels that NQ was trading in from around 6,600 to 6,800. The fact that we're holding this support again at around 6,800 right now, the top of the previous channel, which is now a new uh, support, right? And we're pushing back up. You know, this is showing me that we're slowly starting to get back up to this previous resistance at around $7,000. And we're slowly starting to fill this channel potentially back up to around $7,100. And if we take a look, you know, at the 20-day one-hour chart here on NQ, you know, we're still holding that uptrend pattern as well, right? If we clear this drawing set, let's see if the channel looks good. Actually, it might not look good here. But uh, let's take a look anyway. I don't think it's going to match up well, but let's see. Actually, no, it's not bad. There we go. There we go. Take a look, guys. The same exact channel. It's holding the support. We're breaking above the 180 SMA. We already did. And now we're testing that 50 SMA resistance. So, guys, keep an eye on these channels. Literally, go on your thinkorswim platform, whatever you're using, right? Whether it is Fidelity, Active Trader, Pro, Think or swim. I don't know many other platforms. Those, those are the two main ones that I personally know. Whatever you guys use, go draw this channel. Keep an eye on this channel next week because this is going to determine the trend of the overall markets. If we break down below, that's going to be a huge, 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 huge bearish sign to the downside. More potential selling to come. And of course, if we start to push up, we could end up filling this gap that the channel has opened for us, you know, really opening up some strong profit margin opportunities on some of these, you know, ETFs that we trade based upon the markets, on some bull ETFs, and really just on some large cap stocks, right? If you like trading large cap stocks, you know, if the overall market does end up closing this gap tomorrow or, you know, this next week, we could end up getting some nice plays on, you know, some Facebook stock you know, some of these, you know, Apple stocks that, that fell down a little bit this week that did have some pullback. Um, you know, of course, some of these other stocks as well that we're going to talk about later on in this video. These all could potentially, you know, benefit from a push up in this channel. And of course, we can profit on the downside as well with some bear ETFs, some market uh, ETFs that trade based upon the downside of, uh, you know, the indices. There's a bunch of different ways that we can trade in any market direction, right? That's really the beauty of trading inverse ETFs, put options, call options, all of these different strategies, right? So that's what the overall market is looking like right now, guys. It really is looking like we're gearing up for, you know, some green next week. Let me know down below in the comment section. What do you guys think about this? I would love to know. So what did I end up trading today, guys? We saw the gap down in the morning from around 9.30 to around 11.30 a.m., that two-hour gap down where the market was down nearly 1%. I ended up trading TVIX, guys, and this is one of the hottest uh, ETFs that I personally trade. I trade this one a lot when the markets are red. You know, I've been very successful with it, and I typically stick, excuse me, with what I'm successful with. So um, let's take a look at what... Uh, I personally did here today and we can see, you know, this was very, very choppy this morning, right? Very, very choppy. So we can see here, guys, you know, we ended up selling off all the way down to around $39, opening up that margin of profit in TVIX, right? This is when the markets were pushing up in the morning. And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX correlates with the SPX. So when the market was pushing up from around 930 up to around 940, that's when TVIX was honestly taking that pretty big dump to the downside, right? We can see that. And then from $39, we ended up pushing all the way back to $40. We pulled back to around $39.50, popped up all the way to around $40.33. And I ended up trading it on this third big pullback. And why did I end up trading it on this third big pullback? Because I wanted to see if it was going to hold this higher low from the previous and from the previous, right? And we ended up seeing that that's exactly what it ended up doing, right? We can see it held a higher low at around 39.39. The previous was around 39. 
39. We can say that that was a double bottom actually, but the previous one from that was at around 39.17. So on an intraday basis, guys, TVIX was on an uptrending pattern at this point in time, and I pretty much ended up getting in roughly at around $39.65. Ended up, ended up adding more money at around $39.80, bringing my cost to around $39.75, and I pretty much made you know a small percentage of profit on this trade. Nothing too crazy, but I ended up riding it up to around, uh, what was it, like $40.20 or something like that. I set my limit order at this previous resistance. It really wasn't that big of a trade at all, guys, but what I always preach on this channel is consistency, risk management, and always having a proper plan in place. Risk management is the number one most important thing, guys. You can have stop losses. You can sometimes do mental stop losses, meaning that when you're day trading, actively watching a stock, set a price in your head where you must cut losses. And this is a, something that the beginner trader shouldn't really be doing, th these mental stop losses, because a lot of the time, if you're doing mental stop losses as a beginner, you are not disciplined enough, right? Meaning that, you know, if you set a mental stop loss at 2%, right? You, let's say I got in at around 39.80 and I wouldn't let it go below 39.40, for example. If you're a beginner, you might let it go below and you're like, ah, frick, screw it now. I'm already down 2%. Two 2.5%, might as well just see if it recovers. And that is how you get screwed over, guys, right? That is how you end up blowing your accounts if you are not disciplined. But if you're disciplined enough, you can set mental stop losses and cut your losses there, or you can set a, um, you know, set an order stop loss, which would actually cut your losses at a price point that you, uh, you know, tell it to at a percentage, you know, value that you tell it to. And of course, if you're already in the green, you can set a trailing stop loss, which pretty much will cover your profits without you even looking at the screen if that's how you want to do it guys right so that's what i ended up doing you know pretty small trade on tvix let me know down below what you guys ended up trading today the second trade i ended up making which was actually in ticker symbol e a guys ea electronic arts i'm sure a lot of you have been looking at this stock over these past couple of days and the movement of this stock today guys was absolutely ridiculous. Do you guys remember literally four days ago, three, four days ago, this stock reported earnings and it crashed 18%, guys. It crashed 18% from 92 to 74. And we ended up filling that entire gap and some. Now we're at $98 from that drop after earnings. So this is an earnings play and really one of the most perfect played out earnings plays that you honestly can see with one of these strategies that I use. Meaning that this strategy, watching stocks that report earnings, that tank after their earnings, and watching if they fill the gap that is one strategy that I use in terms of trading earnings. And this stock, Electronic Arts, did exactly that to the T, a perfect, perfect move. So I ended up trading, uh, day trading EA today. And this was for a, a actually a bigger profit than, uh, what, what's it called, uh, TVIX. And I credit this one to, uh, I forget who called it out in the group chat. Someone was talking about EA today. Uh, they were like, uh, well, what did they say? They said, congrats to anybody that owns EA stock. And I was like, oh crap, EA stock. I forgot about this one. I ended up looking at it and I was like, wow, it's up 8%. I think it was this morning. We can see, let's see if I'm right. Let's see if I'm right. If it's up 8% from here, that means I am right. So from around $83, the move up to up to there. Yep, see, 8% exactly. This is when he called it out. It was up around 8%, and that's when I ended up starting uh, to watch EA, and I ended up making the trade on EA on this pullback that we see literally right after he ended up calling it out. We pushed up to 940. This was at 940 a.m. We ended up pushing up to $92. We pulled back down to $90, and we were holding this 50 SMA as a support very nicely. So at this point, guys, I was being a bit cautious because I didn't want to hop in when it was already up 10%. And we saw it broke this resistance here at $92, which really signaled to me we could continue to run. So literally once it broke that at around $92, I took a position at $92.50 and I ended up riding it up 
about 1.5% up to around 93-ish, 93.90-ish, and I ended up taking my profits right there on a very, very quick day trade. So let me know down below, are any of you guys EA shareholders, this is actually a ridiculous, ridiculous uh, move that we see here, guys. You don't really see this too often that a stock crashes down 20% nearly, and then three days later, it's up around, you know, 25% from where it crashed. You know, that's a pretty, pretty big, big move, and I did see some news regarding Fortnite or something like that. Maybe that's why the stock pushed up today. I'm not much of a Fortnite player, to be completely honest with you guys. I've only played it one time in my entire life, but I think I read, I was reading something about Fortnite, that being the potential reason as to why EA went up today. If you guys have any news on that, drop a comment down below. Let me know. I would love to see what you guys have to say about it, but... You know, that's pretty much it in terms of my trading for today on the 8th of February in 2019. So guys, you know, just to quickly talk about some other ETFs that did very well today. We saw natural gas actually ended up having a green day today, guys. It was up around six cents, meaning you guys ended up doing very well today. And we were talking about this in yesterday's video, guys, that... It seems like we found a low at around 255 because the RSI was very low at this point. We pushed to a lower low and we were seeing whether or not, you know, natural gas can push back up to around that 50 SMA area. I was talking about that in yesterday's video and that if we were able to push back up and slowly fill that gap, that would open up a good margin on you guys, which is exactly what ended up happening today. Not too crazy of a move. It was up around 5%, but still 5% is a very solid move for an ETF that's been getting hammered over the past couple of months, guys. So that is a nice move today, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, you guys here. We saw Cron today do very poorly. It's dumping again. Now we officially see, you know, a trend here that could be the potential top for Cron, right? We can see why I'm saying this is because this is looking like a strong resistance for Cron at around $21.20. We can see it popped up here to about $21.20, had trouble getting above it there, and now we're seeing the break below the 50 SMA. So this could officially be the sell-off we've been waiting for in terms of the pot stock. So put options are looking super juicy right now in terms of uh, Cron. You know, CGC was down around 3%. Now, this is looking like a very, very big bearish sign. It's looking like it found a double top here. It broke the 50 SMA. You know, the EMA is trending down. It broke below the 50 SMA, which is a bearish sign here. So we could be headed down in terms of CGC as well. We saw Facebook today actually got down to around 165, I believe. But now we're holding actually 164. But now the funny thing is is that we're holding that 50 SMA here on the 180 chart. So this could be a potential bounce back up to around 170, 172. If the markets do end up pushing green next week, like the technicals are telling us that it's going to, this could end up being a very solid play this upcoming week. So another one, Apple guys, very similar situation, right? We pulled back from 175 down to 170. We're holding that 50 SMA. So this could be a potential bounce back play heading into next week if the markets do end up pushing green. So guys, you know, I'm going to be talking about a lot more stocks, ETFs, and potential trades that I'm looking for in Sunday's video. So if you're new to this channel, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and stay tuned for Sunday's video. I'm typically talking around 10 to 15 ticker symbols that I'm watching for the upcoming week on every single Sunday. So check out that video, guys. Be in tune for it. There's going to be a video tomorrow as well. We're going to be talking about some cool stuff on this channel. So subscribe if you're new. Drop a comment. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I really do appreciate all you guys out there that do support the channel, that do watch the videos all the time, that hit that like button. It really, really does mean a lot to me. So let me know how you guys ended up doing this week. Did you do well this week? You know, I would love to know down below in the comment section. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.